let me tell you, recently, one of our producers, Alison here, uh, came across a new trend that many of us have never heard of. The underground world of female masking. Anyone heard of that? No. No, right. Well, it's a community comprised of mostly heterosexual men who, with the help of a mask and a silicone sex suit, strive to transform themselves into real-life sex dolls. Now, this is a man who goes by the name of T-Virus, and he's here today to divulge the secrets of this hidden lifestyle. Now, we're going to meet T-Virus in a moment, but first, take a peek into T-Virus's world of female masking. Step into the hidden world of the living dolls, a secret community of men who, with the help of female masks and silicone sex suits, transform themselves into the fantasy doll of their dreams. My name is Rob, and uh, I go by T-Virus. I express myself as a living doll. T-Virus invited us into his home in Nashville, Tennessee to reveal what's behind the mask of this very secret underworld. I'm 55 years old. I was married for 20 years. I'm not married any longer. In my private life, uh, I'm a living doll. It's clearly not real and it's not intended to be real. The mannequin-like, uh, emotionless expression. If you're wondering how does somebody get into this, T-Virus says he's been masking since he was a little boy. Born with a cleft palate, he constantly looked for ways to mask his face. From an early age being teased by the other children, it caused me to try and figure out ways to do something else with, with what I had to work with. I would take T-shirts and then I could tie it around my head and then from that, I would draw a normal face on it. From the crude T-shirt masks he made as a child, T-Virus spent most of his life on a quest to feel beautiful. When he discovered masking, he says he felt reborn. I point to May 27th, 2006 as my date of birth as far as becoming a doll. The mask that I bought um, was very thin and it fit very tight. I didn't want to take it off. It was pretty erotic. If you're thinking any old mask will do, think again. T-Virus walked us through the elaborate and personal process of picking a mask. Well, you're looking for eyes that line up, how well it fits your, your own face. Once you do have it on, uh, you do sweat a little bit. That in and of itself creates a kind of suction. But yeah, this is how I like her light. And she's got that little bit of a glitter to the uh, eyeshadow. Taylor is, is just incredible. You cannot look at that and not see a little bit of a diva. While T-Virus says the mask is the most important part, being a doll also entails wearing an elaborate silicone sex suit. It goes from your ankles all the way up to your neck and your armpits. It's almost like putting on a pair of socks. There are some options that you can get with the suit. Uh, then we'll uh, provide a catheter to you. It's something that extends down uh, through the uh, vagina so that you can actually urinate, you know, as maybe a woman might. As far as number two, forget about it. But just as a mask and a sex suit does not make of the doll, once you're in, it's important to make the doll your own. All of the characters come from the kind of woman you'd like to meet. I want to be kind of petite and pretty, and in looking at myself, you know, once I've created the, uh, the illusion, you do feel a sense that you've created something beautiful. Once he goes through the process of getting all dressed up, how do people react to seeing a living, breathing doll in public? Quite often, you know, if I'm out on the street, it does get a lot of stares. In a way, you're like a fly on the wall. A lot of times, I would just stand there perfectly still, like a mannequin would, you know, and, and you're eavesdropping the whole time. You're not trying to scare anyone. For most people, it's right out of Silence of the Lambs. On any other day, he'd be out there skinning people in the basement. And regretfully, that's a part of it, and I wish it wasn't. But T-Virus wants everyone to know he's not a creepy axe murderer. He's just trying to fit in. It's a little bit painful sometimes to feel as though you were born in the wrong set to the wrong body. You don't have to spend 30000 to have your boobs in life. It's a way for you to experience that, for you to know what that's like, and it's not permanent. In the end, T-Virus says it's all about being happy. 
Sincerely, when I look in the mirror and I just look at my life in general, I'm pretty proud of who I've become and where I'm at. Even the most beautiful people in the world, they all feel pain and they all feel something about themselves that they'd like to change. And this is the way to do that. Well, as you just witnessed, there is a lot that goes into being a living doll. So, are you all ready to meet this living doll in the flesh? Yeah. Okay. Please welcome T-Virus. Wow. How does it feel coming out here? I know it's hard for you to talk through the nerve-wracking. <laughs> Frightening. Okay. So I'll just give you some time to settle down. Okay, so we saw some of the process of, of getting into the costume. How long does it take you to do that? Uh, maybe 15 minutes. 15 minutes? So you can do it in 15 minutes, mm. the, from the whole thing? Mm. Now, are people shocked when they see you? Sometimes shocked, sometimes um, startled. Now, as you can hear, it is very difficult for T-Virus to communicate when he's wearing the mask. So, uh, or I should say, when she's wearing the mask. So, uh, we'll talk to her a little while later on when uh, he reveals a man behind the doll. Do I refer to you as he or she? Uh, whatever you want. <laughs> whatever I want, T-Virus, okay. When we come back, find out what happened when T-Virus took some staff members out on the town in Nashville, Tennessee. Don't go away. Today, uh, we're exploring the hidden world of female masking, an underground community of men who, behind closed doors, strive to look like female sex dolls. Now, we've been exploring that world with living doll T-Virus here, who was kind enough to invite us into his home in Nashville, Tennessee. As you can imagine, a lot goes into transforming from a 55-year-old man into a hot, young, female sex doll, including a special skin suit and a custom-designed mask. Take a look at how T-Virus makes his transformation. The transformation from man to doll is by no means a simple task. The very act of getting into the doll suit is a long and difficult process. First, Rob must cover his entire body with baby powder just to get the suit on. Then the suit is painstakingly unrolled directly onto his skin. The fun skin itself uh, is kind of a one size that's lost. For myself, if I know I'm going to be wearing the suit for any length of time, then I will generally fast a little bit. You know, the night before, the day before, I just stop, you know, eating a lot. The next step, choosing an outfit, begins well before a stitch of clothing is even worn. When I transform, generally I have an idea to begin with. Um, I've either done some research or I've seen a character in a movie or uh, maybe I found a piece of clothing uh, somewhere and that will be enough to serve as a trigger for me. When it actually comes time to get ready, all of the pieces have come together, uh, the costume has come together, the mask has come together. Dressing with the fun skin, it's a little unique in that you're trying to hide some of the seams and the neck. Um, so always when you're looking for clothing and articles that you're going to use, you're very mindful of how you're going to disguise those parts of the, uh, the ultimate creation. The thumb skin to me is like creating the palette. Um, that gives you the, the mannequin body that's smooth from head to toe. Um, but then from that, you have to build the rest. And a big part of that, and a very personal part for all of the dolls and the female maskers, is clearly the face. Um, they don't like to do something a little unique. They don't want to do the same thing that everyone else has done. On the other hand, there's only so many masks that are made. The suit itself acts like an extremely tight winter coat. It gets extremely hot inside. When the baby powder mixes with too much sweat, it's a white hot mess. Where it all comes together and you actually create that illusion, um, I will say that mirrors and cameras tend to be a living doll's best friend. I'm gonna liken it 
to painting, or any time that I'm, you know, creating a painting, um, it may not be a Van Gogh, but I can look at it for hours and just think, oh my God, I did that. You know, and that's kind of what this is about. Wow. Wow, it looks really, really hot inside of that costume. Now, after all that goes into transforming into a living doll, uh, we wondered what happens when T-virus goes out in public. Well, we've got that covered too. Take a look at what happened when T-virus took members of our staff out on the town. After a long preparation process, T-virus hit the town. After checking out some of Nashville's historical landmarks, it was time to discover how T-Virus would be received by the public. So, we headed downtown. Getting around might not be easy and may even have its share of challenges. But location after location, this doll turned more than a few heads and even made some friends along the way. Do your lips move? This is to T-Virus from Thumper. After a long evening, T-Virus heads home. But there was still work to do. After all, now she has to take the bodysuit off. Wow. So how did people respond to you? It seemed positive mm -hmm. there. Did, what did they do? Come up, ask you questions? Really lean into their ear. So they, they lean right in, so, mm. so they lean, have to lean right in so they can hear you. Yeah, or you get your smartphone out and you type. So you, you text or type someone even though they're standing right in front of you because you, doesn't that kind of defeat the whole object of going out looking like this? Oh, uh, not really. Not really? It's, it, it's the having that attention, is it? Yeah, I would say attention. Fine. Attention, yeah. okay. Well, look, when we come back, we're going to meet the man behind the mask and find out just who T-Virus is when he's not a living doll. So don't go away. You are not going to want to miss this shocking reveal. Yeah. Welcome back. Today, we've been exploring the secret world of female masking, an underground culture of men who, behind closed doors, turn themselves into living sex dolls. We've been talking to T-Virus, who allowed us into his home and into his private life. Well, now it's time for T-Virus to remove the mask and for us to see who he is when he's not being T-Virus. Now, I haven't met the person, the man behind T-Virus. Are you ready to do so? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Rob, come on out. A bit of a standing ovation. Yeah. Whoa! Have, have a seat. Mm -hmm. Nice to see you too. Are you surprised at that reaction? This is different because I mean I've never come out. This is the first time I mean, you're usually, revealing. Usually if I go out I stay in character the whole time. Is this the first time? for you to come out through there because you're literally coming out this is like you're unmasking mm. scary yeah but i've i've kind of come to terms with it would you describe your sexuality i do tend to think more in terms of kind of a, a middle line a gray area uh if you want to call it transgender tranny whatever i think that stems from childhood yeah um being born with a cloth and the speech impediment um you know the other children can be kind of cruel and, and then i can be on the Playing around with five other boys, like pounding the snot out of me, yeah, that, that could be bad. <laughs> so, how did you deal with that? Well, you know, I had a really loving family, and um, at home, we never used the word different or special. No. I mean, that never came up. But did you start using? I, I heard from that tape, you started making your own masks. Well, sure, because in the real world, um, I was reacting to that. Yeah. You know, we live in a world that does value perfection. Yeah, yeah, and, it does. Um, reaction to that, I would. I would take t-shirts and I would cut the waist out of them and I would stretch them around my head and then draw faces on them that didn't have a cleft, you know. And um, I imagine there's a little bit of desperation in that. Yeah. Um, Tell me, what was, 
What was it like the first time you put on one of those masks? The very first time I put one on, there is a very, uh, you know, ironic sensation to it, yes. In, in that, that goes away after time. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah. Uh, it's, it, it's tight, though, isn't it? It's that, very tight, yeah. What's the longest you've worn one of these costumes for? Um, we did a show in Atlanta uh, last year, and I, I tend to do this um, uh, quasi-professionally, where we go to shows and demonstrate uh, the product and whatnot. And um, so I had to be up at 7 in the suit. I was in makeup by 9. We did our <laughs> seminar at 11, and then we ran our... Uh, our booth all day, and by one in the morning I was peeling out. So it was about 18 hours is my record. How did you go to the loo in that time? I didn't. What? Yeah. Now, is there a sexual component to all of this? I think like anybody. I mean, I, I think in terms of, um, you know, uh, you're waiting maybe for your girlfriend to get ready because you're going out. Yeah. And, you know, five minutes turns into 10, turns into <laughs> 20, turns into an hour. And then when you're finally out, it's like hands off. Right? It's like, don't mess it up, <laughs> you know? Is anybody ever a bit creeped out by the suit? Because as we saw before, it gives you limited vision, I understand. Yeah, very limited. So does anybody ever get scared by it? I I've never had a bad experience. You know, you can just stand there, you know, stone face, obviously. Um, and people will look and they'll comment. And then at some point, if somebody's giving you a gaze long enough, you'll do one of these and they'll... <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, uh, so, you know, it can be fun. We saw that you've got quite a few masks. Yeah, most of them um, are by Nikki Dyer. Um, she a, runs a company called Nikki's Monster Shop in California. Um, I just love what she does with them. I want to thank you so, so much <laughs> for doing that. Really, really, really good. Really good. Mm -hmm. Just before we go, one of the things Rob just said is that, is it okay for you to meet people, because as you, mm -hmm. so this is kind of another first for you. Oh, I guess in this way, yeah. 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 So, um, <laughs> who would you like to meet? Who is it? Oh, no. Wow! You guys have to meet the real you, buddy. <laughs> yeah! You are really good. God, we'll take care of you. That's the first for the show, uh, and I want to thank Alison for bringing this story to us. Yes, thank you. I know where they can reach you.